Hi, ArcfieldWeather.com meteorologist Paul Dorian here on Thursday morning, September 1st, and we still do not have any name systems out in the tropical Atlantic. The Atlantic Basin uh, is a little bit active right now, but again, three different systems, none of them named as of yet. It turns out that uh, the bulk of July and August, one of the quietest period in decades in the Atlantic Basin. We'll talk about the tropics here up front in this video and then we'll get into the Labor Day weekend outlook. We have some very nice weather conditions to end the work week today and tomorrow in the Mid-Atlantic region, the Northeast U.S. the Great Lakes. Hot conditions out in the western part of the nation. Looks like that kind of pattern out west will continue for the next several days with heat from California to the interior northwest. Let's start off by looking at a climatological map. The peak of the Atlantic Basin tropical season typically comes around uh, the middle part of September, specifically here it uh, turns out to be around September 10th. One of the main reasons for that is that sea surface temperatures in the tropical Atlantic tend to uh, continue to increase until the latter part of August, maybe the early part of September, maybe a little bit of a lag between uh, that peak in the sea surface temperatures and the actual uh, peak in terms of tropical cyclone activity. But again, it's right around the middle part of September, specifically around September 10th or so, and we have had a very quiet period uh, for the bulk of July and August with no named storms in that time period, and that's a rarity indeed in the Atlantic Basin. Again, the three systems right now we'll take a look at over the next uh, minute or two here, and uh, we certainly can have uh, uh, an uptick in activity that lasts through the rest of September into the month of October. But again, we're getting to the point now where we're reaching the climatological peak for the Atlantic Basin. Well, here's where we stand as of September 1st in the Atlantic Basin in terms of tropical activity. There are three different systems to monitor here. This one that is called uh, tropical system number five is already starting to weaken. It's out in the North Atlantic, so it's uh, moving over some cooler and cooler waters. Does not have much of a life left in it. Here's another system that can indeed become a named tropical storm. If this particular system reaches tropical storm status, it would become Danielle the fourth of the 2022 season. It continues to push on a northwest track, but we'll see in a moment here. We, we talked about a, a, an upper level trough kind of sliding from uh, the Great Lakes to the uh, northeastern coastline and likely causing this system to turn out to sea before it ever reaches the U.S. mainland, and that continues to be uh, the case here. It looks like this system, though it may become a name storm, and again, if it happens uh, next in line, it would become Danielle, but it also appears like it will not ever reach the U.S. mainland. There's another system out here that has some decent conditions, environmental conditions. It could intensify into a tropical storm, something we'll monitor over the next several days as we go through now the beginning part of the month of September. Well, let's now get back to the continental U.S. This is the 6Z uh, model run by the GFS model in terms of 850 millibar temperature anomalies. And we'll be hearing a lot about the heat out in the western U.S., places like California, all the way into the interior northwest and northern plains. But meanwhile, northeastern U.S., mid-Atlantic, under very nice conditions here, not only comfortable temperatures, but low humidity values will continue not only today, but into tomorrow as well, thanks in large part to a, a, a very strong high pressure system that had its origins way up in Canada. That same high pressure system pushes off the eastern seaboard this weekend. That allows for a, a backflow, a backside of the high southwesterly flow of air pushing warmer and increasingly more humid air back into the northeastern part of the nation. Ultimately, the weather pattern becomes unsettled by the time we get to late Sunday, Sunday night, Monday in the northeastern part of the nation. And this heat stays out there over the next several days in the western U.S. Let's move forward here. And here we go into the end of the work week on Friday. Still hotter than normal out across California, Washington, and Oregon. And that uh, heat kind of exp uh, exp extends to the north and east into the 
the northern plains still nice conditions on Friday northeastern part of the nation and that general pattern holds firm here for the next several days here we are now into Sunday still hot from California across to the uh, Montana the northern plains but not too bad in the uh, eastern half of the nation, including some cooler than normal conditions down across Texas and New Mexico. When you see cooler than normal conditions this time of the year, uh, mo more than likely there's a lot of clouds and rain and indeed there's some tropical moisture that will feed into that part of the nation, keeping them cooler than normal and wetter than, wetter than normal by the time we get to the latter part of the Labor Day weekend. Here we are all the way now into the early part and the middle part of next week. This is the forecast map for Wednesday, September 7th. Still near normal conditions hanging on along the eastern seaboard, but a, a wide area of the country from California to the northwestern states all the way into the northern plains and upper Midwest above normal conditions. But again, sticking to normal to even below normal across some of the southern states and uh, right along the eastern seaboard right into the middle part of next week. Well, here's where we begin the, uh, the day on Thursday in the month of September in terms of the surface weather maps. Strong high pressure really dominates the scene all the way from the Rockies to the eastern seaboard, kind of a double barrel high pressure system. Very nice conditions today, tonight, tomorrow, Great Lakes, Mid-Atlantic, northeastern part of the nation, and moisture confined uh, to the southern states. Now let's move forward and again we have hot weather conditions out across the western states here. Here we go into the end of the work week on Friday morning. Notice that high pressure kind of consolidates tomorrow uh, into New England and already on the back side we're seeing kind of a, uh, a pretty impressive fetch of air from the southwest to the northeast. That will on Friday push some warmer and more humid air uh, from the south central states all the way into the Great Lakes and that kind of translates to the eastern seaboard by the time we get to the upcoming weekend. Here we are now by Saturday morning. Notice a piece of that high shifts off the eastern seaboard by Saturday morning allowing for a southwesterly flow of increasingly humid air to return back to the mid-Atlantic region of the northeastern states and uh, we'll see an increase in clouds as well on Saturday in places like D.C., Philadelphia, New York City. And not a not bad weekend at all, but it gets warmer, more humid, and increasingly unsettled. Let's move forward here, and we have another strong high-pressure system over the southeastern part of Canada by the time we get to Sunday. And here, by the way, is a reflection of that tropical system by the time we get to Sunday morning, the one that could very well become Danielle as it starts to uh, head towards the northwest and it starts to appear on the weather maps here but again upper level trough will help to steer that away to the north Andes ever uh, before it ever has a chance to reach the uh, uh, eastern seaboard. Then we go into the latter part of Sunday, Sunday night and again it kind of becomes more unsettled. Chance of showers and thunderstorms in, uh, the I-95 corridor, for example, will tend to increase later Sunday, Sunday night, going into the uh, holiday on Monday, Labor Day. And here's that tropical system. Very well could be a named tropical storm, perhaps even a hurricane at this time, but has little, if any, chance of making it all the way, uh, thankfully, to the eastern seaboard. It stays kind of unsettled during the early part of next week, and high pressure resumes control after a weak frontal passage by the time we get to Monday and Tuesday of next week. That front, again, can cause some shower and thunderstorm activity late Sunday, Sunday night, Monday in the Mid-Atlantic region, in the Northeast U.S. That front moves through and high pressure resumes control as we get in later Monday, uh, Monday night into the day on Tuesday. So yes, there are some systems out in the tropical Atlantic. None of them are named at the moment. Certainly can see Danielle form form over the next couple of days very likely will never make it uh, to the eastern seaboard we will continue to monitor those other systems as we go through the beginning part of September that's it for now for arcfieldweather.com I'm meteorologist Paul Dorian